Hello my quilting friends. I'm Christy. I'm the Crosshatch Quilter. Today is May 13th, 2021. And I'm here to talk to you about what I've been up to this last month. Um, so welcome back to my sewing room. And I hope that you've been in your sewing room or wherever you stitch and sew, creating all the things and enjoying your spring. It's been a weird spring. Well, it's been a normal spring here in Utah. Um, our spring consists of it'll snow in the middle of the night and then the next day it'll be 80 degrees. <laughs> so two mornings ago we woke up to snow on the ground and it got into the low 30s in the middle of the night and today I think our high is going to be 81. So it's just, that's just the way it is but we enjoy it and when it's nice we go outside when it's not windy and enjoy the spring time weather. I'm excited to go camping soon and just all the fun things that summer holds for all of us. We are, we did homeschool this last year um, with everything that's been going on in the world we chose to do homeschool and that is wrapping up. We're on the last week leg of the marathon and <laughs> we're just so excited that my daughter and I that school is almost over but this last week has been definitely a little bit of a challenge um, and homeschool is something I never thought that I would do but it has been a lot of fun it's been great having my daughter home this year so I've really enjoyed it but it has definitely been busy um, but I still get time to stitch and sew and just make time for those things so I wanted to show you what I've been up to. I have some previous finishes to show you, my whips, some new purchases, and some Happy Mail. So let's get started. As I talked about in my first quilting video, one of the things that I love so much about quilting is that it ties me to my past and to my future. One of my favorite heirloom gifts that I've received from my grandma, my aunt, and my mom are all quilts. And I love keeping those, um, snuggling with them. I still use them. And it's just such a neat, comforting gift to receive from a loved one. And so, of course, when I started learning to quilt, that was the first thing I wanted to do was make everyone a quilt. <laughs> um, I've made them for my niece, my dad, my mother-in-law, and of course my children. So I wanted to share some of those with you today. Um, the first quilt that I'm going to share with you um, was the first one that I made for my daughter and I was so excited to make it for her because she loves quilts. She She's a great receiver of a quilt gift because she just makes you feel so appreciated. She uses it constantly and so I just love that. Um, when I first started quilting, I fell in love with Little Red Riding Hood fabric from Tasha Noel through Riley Blake. And so I bought, you know, that was one of the first lines that um, I tried to collect all the fabrics for. And I made her, her first quilt out of that fabric. Now I didn't follow a pattern. I just used a five inch charm pack um, squares and then I bought yardage and I made Dresden blades with it and I just made up my own pattern because I had little pieces here and there of what I wanted her quilt to look like so I just put it all together and so without further ado here is her first quilt now this line had a neat border fabric that came on the bottom to make bags, I believe, was the original idea, but I've seen a lot of people, including the designer, put it in a quilt. So I just used five inch charm squares, and then I put in that border. And then I made Dresden blades and incorporated three blocks of Dresden flowers into the bottom. I love this so much. It is, easy, it is beginner friendly. I thought that it was going to be so difficult, but after watching YouTube tutorials on how to make a Dresden plate, I just 
went for it and they're not as difficult as they look. So then I just did fussy cut centers. And then a lot of people um, asked me on my last video if I quilt my own quilts. I do sometimes and then sometimes I send them to the long armor. This one I quilted myself. I did most of it with just a quarter inch um, away from the seam. And then down at the bottom, around the Dresden plates, I did like a feathery, I'll have to get up close and see if you can see it. I cross hatched this and then around on the background fabric, I did a feather. And if you turned around on the back, you can probably see it better. So I just free motion quilted the feathers. So they're not perfect, but and actually those aren't feathers, they're clams, clamshells, but they're really fun to make. And they don't have to be perfect for them to look pretty. That was what um, drew me to them in the first place. They can be all different shapes and sizes and it not look like a beginner did it, which is what they did. <laughs> so that was her first quilt that I made and I just love it. And she puts it on a quilt ladder in her room so then the next quilt um, fabric line that Tasha Noel came out with, I of course had to have it because I just loved the Tasha Noel Riley, the Little Red Riding Hood fabric so much. So what I did next is I made the clam bake quilt from Thimble Blossoms and I used the cute Tasha Noel fabric. I don't remember the name of this line, but it has little girls riding bikes and they're at a little vintage shop outside like a farmer's market. And so there's farmer's market stands. So I just used the whole entire fabric line. It calls for two layer cakes, I believe. And made that. I quilted this one myself with just lines across and I was so nervous I was going to pinch the fabric on the back because with it being that close it would be so easy to do. So I just would like quilt a few lines and then I would you know just very intricately make sure that I had pressed it all out. Um, when I quilt on my own machine I use bobby pins and baste it really close together, but then because this was such close quilting, I had to readjust it several times. But then um, Fat Quarter Shop had done a um, quilt design with this bike. And so I added this to the bike, did to the back and then added her a little note to let her know when I made it and it was made with love. And I did that because of the little girl riding the bike on the quilt, you know, the quilt fabric. So I thought that that would match. So that was a fun quilt label to make and add to the back. I just um, put a smack dab in the middle. So there's the clam bake quilt. And then the very last quilt that I've made her, um, it's been a few years, but my mom had made me a Irish chain quilt and had gifted it to me and it was actually the year that she passed away that I received it from her and so I really wanted to make my daughter Haley an Irish chain quilt um, and when I ran across this fabric I knew it was the perfect quilt to make for her because it's still darling but in a grown-up pattern so this was using Pam Kitty's Love fabric and has all the cute little vintage Valentine girls. So pretty. I think that this one is her favorite quilt. She uses it the most. And then um, part of the fabric line had these cute little playing cards. Looks like vintage advertisements. So that's the backing fabric. So I'm just so glad that she's, she loves the quilts that I make because they're so fun to make for her. And another time I'll show you what I've made for my son.
but thank you for letting me show you those quilts from the past and next I'll show you my whips that I'm currently working on. I've been having so much fun working in my sewing room this spring. It's fun to sit out by the front window and watch the flowers bloom and just watch the weather turn from winter to spring. Um, so I have gotten quite a bit of sewing done recently and the first thing that I've been working on is I showed you my progress on the Vintage Block Along by Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet. It is a free sew along that is on her blog, beinmybonnetblogspot.com. So I've made some more blocks and I made got this one done yesterday. It is the flag block. I actually made two of them because I have plans to put one in the quilt and then one in a project. I'll show that in a future video. They're so fun to make. I love, love, love this block. And then here's the house block. This fabric is from a wide back of hers, um, which is 108 inches wide, but it's the same quality. It's the same type of cotton fabric as her other fabric. So I just like to incorporate both in there. And I love that plaid. And then this block reminds me of my grandma. Um, her house used to be these colors, so I wanted to do a green, brown, and yellow block for her. I don't remember the names of these blocks, but they're all free on her blog. And it's just under the vintage block along each week. She tells stories of her grandma and all of these blocks are pieced after what our grandparents used to have to use as templates and do hand sewing to make a quilt this intricate. So we're so blessed that we can make quilts this way now. And it was so generous of Lori to put these on her blog so that we all can make them. Looks like a sunflower. I got pretty close with those corners on the points, but it came out great. I love this. I cannot wait to have this quilt done. It is one of my very favorite sampler quilts I've ever seen. It's just so much fun and it is fun to read the stories on her blog of her grandparents and her mom and aunts and it reminds me of growing up and being surrounded by my grandma's quilting and crafting stitching and my mom in her sewing room so this has been such a fun project and it will it will be such a fun and meaningful treasure to hand down to my family as well so then the next thing that i worked on is i caught up on my forevermore quilt and this is by pam buddha and this is what it's going to look like when it's done it is a block of the month um i ordered mine through Fat Quarter Shop and I am all caught up now. I'm so excited. Um, here's one block or one month. I think this is month four, the most recent. I could be wrong though. Love, love, love these fabrics. They're Civil War reproduction fabrics and I'm all caught up now. Um, so that makes me happy because sometimes I get fall I fall behind on block of the months and then it's just like it just goes out the window and then I don't keep up. So I'm excited to actually have everything caught up and I really don't want to fall behind because once you do it's just overwhelming. But this block right here is not perfect, but it's actually this one. I'm not redoing it. So <laughs> if you're if you're driving by on a speeding, galloping horse, you're not going to see the mistakes. Um, and my dog is in here with me. So if you hear him snoring, I'm sorry. He likes to be anywhere that the that mom is, but he particularly loves to be in my sewing room. And quilting projects are like potato chips. You can't just have one, right? I have two new starts to show you since my last video. 
and in my first quilting video I showed you that I had purchased this quilt kit. It's Minikin Simpson, their new fabric line Rosalyn, I believe is how you pronounce it. And I got the um, quilt kit A is for Apple. And I purchased the laser cut applique shapes. So it took out the a lot of the hard work and the stress of getting those perfect lines and shapes through needle turn or whatever your preferred applique method is. So I've got that started and I have cut out all the backgrounds and got all of my shapes ironed onto the fabrics and I've started appliquing with a blanket stitch around. So this will take me quite a long time to do all the shapes but they're so pretty. I just love this fabric line. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so here's just a few. I'll, I won't share all the blocks with you. There's quite a few. But so each day I'll just grab one and little by little get the blanket stitching done on them. I'm doing it on my machine. And I would have gotten further along on this quilt cutting out the alphabet and getting those pieced. Um, but I stopped working on this to join a quilt along with all of you. Um, everyone's been posting their blocks on Instagram and it's the Red Sampler Quilt Along by Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet. She is doing a quilt along Red Sampler quilt with all of her previous books um, and the first one is Farm Girl Vintage 1 and then Farm Girl Vintage 2 which the book is back there on that book stand and she's using the Great Granny Squared book. I of course had all these books already so I just immediately I was so excited as soon as she announced it I immediately dropped everything I was doing ran in my sewing room I got all my fabrics together when I'm working on a current project, I put them on these Rascog carts. And so I grabbed all my red and white fabrics and put it in there and I'm ready to go. But I like doing it that way because then my sewing room doesn't become such a tornado of a mess. I believe she's also using the Spelling Bee book. So if you haven't joined us yet and you'd like to, grab your fabrics and um, it is such a fun sew along. Quilt along, it is just gonna be the most special quilt um, using all different tones of red. So there's dark, there's, you know, ginghams to bring in that medium tone. I just love the contrast. This block was, um, made in the six inch by Lori. And I just was so excited the first week that I made this one a 12 inch without even reading. I just cut it out and then I was like, oh, I'll just make a future block a six inch. So there's my 12 inch that doesn't match everyone else's. This is a great granny squared block. Love this. They're so much fun and just, it's gonna be the neatest quilt. I was immediately on board the second she announced it. And then here's some six inch blocks. I love all the different churn dashes and sawtooth stars. Grab it really quick so I don't cough in your ear. Excuse me. And then this is the block that I made in lieu of a 12 inch to replace the flying geese 12 inch block. I apologize for the breaks in between. I have springtime allergies and they manifest themselves in coughing fits. And so I knew I'd have to probably take a couple breaks so that I didn't just cough the whole entire time. My next new start that I did was the Victorious Quilt and it's by Minikin Simpson. It is a quilt kit that I bought last year, last fall I believe. Here's a better picture of it. So I've just been working on making the quarter square triangle blocks 
So this should be a pretty quick quilt to make. I think that I can get it done before the 4th of July and get it quilted. Um, I have it all cut and prepped. I just leave it next to my sewing machine and this is going to be my new leaders and enders until it's done and then I will go back to my um, broken dishes leaders and enders project that I'm doing with Joe Morton fabrics and I showed this to you last time so what I do is I just cut up the fabric and get it all prepped and put it in this cubby right here next to my sewing machine so as I need it I just grab blocks and zip them through but this is how I organize it I just get everything cut up and prepped and ready so that it's just easy no thinking kind of project which are my favorite I also bought some more fabric Jo Morton fabric her new line called Hopewell to add to this broken dishes quilt so it's just going to be a big mix of all Jo Morton Civil War fabrics so I'm excited about that and then I've been on the red and white quilt kick and I just can't get enough so I bought another red and white quilt kit. It is Simple Elegance and I ordered this through JJ Stitches online. Just a cute little bundle of reds and creams. I love that floral print. So I don't know when I'm going to start this one but I, I wanted to get it for my stash. And then I have some Happy Mail that came through. My sweet friend Lily knows that I have been looking for an out of print Blackbird Designs quilt book, quilt pattern. Um, it's actually a series of four books. And so here's the, she found them and sent them to me. So generous. This is what the quilt will look like when it's done. So I'm going to collect fabric so that I can make this because I most definitely want to make this. It's been on my unicorn list forever. I'm sure many of you relate. I really hope that Blackbird Designs will reprint this. Um, it's one of my favorites. So maybe if enough of us let them know that we want it, then they'll reprint it. <laughs> and then because I love Civil War fabrics, I bought the Civil War Samplers book. I just ordered on Amazon is from Barbara Brockman's Civil War Sampler. And I love sampler quilts. They're probably my favorite because you just get a taste of, you know, a little bit of everything. You don't get bored making it because it's got a mix. Here's a sample of what it could look like. So I'm gonna start making plans and collecting fabrics for that. I just love that quilt layout. <clears throat> and then on Carol Saltbox Stitchers, um, one of her most recent floss tube videos, she showed that she had ordered this wool kit. And I'm a newbie to wool. I haven't made very many projects. Um, I'll show you the one that I have made here. But I instantly knew that I wanted to make this. It's a little series. Um, I think it has four different, one for each season, block. And you can either finish them so that they stand alone or you can make them together in a table runner. So I joined that and this is through Blackberry Primitives. I believe that the block of the month is sold out, but you could always message them and ask. So I got that in the mail. And then I wanted to show you my one previous wool project and I'm still not finished with it. I still need to do the blanket stitching and the decorative stitches on this. But this is a truck month club that was through Buttermilk Basin. So they made one for each month, for each all of the seasons. And this is October's block. I love it so much. I'm gonna be going camping a lot this summer and this is one thing that I'll take with me to do with easy stitching in the truck and just when you're outside visiting with friends and family to sit and stitch and have mindless, you don't have to pay attention. It's just mindless stitching. Well, as you can see, I 
am addicted to all things textiles. I have a great passion for anything wool, cotton fabric, applique, piecing, needle turn, English paper piecing. I'll talk about that in a future video. Cross stitch, embroidery. You can find me most days with a needle in my hand in some way. Um, I really enjoy talking about it with you because I know that you have the same passion as me and it's so fun to talk to like-minded friends. It is such a fun community that we have and I count it as a blessing that I can talk to so many friends about our passion. One of the things that I talked about in my first quilting video was going to my first quilt retreat and how my eyes got opened up to a whole new um, fun obsession, as you, as I would call it, of when you go to a quilt retreat, making sure that your quilting spot is cute and fun. And you don't have to, but it's just, I've become obsessed. So I wanted to show you what my quilting spot looks like at a quilt retreat. And I take my featherweight with me. I purchased a mint colored Singer featherweight to match Lori's, of course. I'm a coffee cat. I asked her for permission and it was okay. And <laughs> she said, of course. <laughs> but I um, I love taking my featherweight because it's sturdy. It's a great little machine. It has a beautiful stitch. They're very dependable. Chances are if there's something wrong with it, you can fix it while you're there at the retreat. They're a simple machine. Therefore, they're easy to fix and problem solve if there's something going on. I I have watched many videos on YouTube from the Featherweight Shop. They are a wealth of information. If you have an old Singer Featherweight that needs to be restored or you have one that isn't working properly, I many times have gone to their tutorials and learned what it is I need to do to fix it. My husband um, fixes it for me, services it. There's two different types of oils that they take. There's like a machine motor oil that you use and then a regular sewing machine oil. But they talk about all of that. They show you exactly where to use it. Um, and I just love them. They're, they're a dependable and practical investment. If you know you buy one, you can bet that it's gonna last for a long time. Through, you know, our great grandparents' lifetime, clear to ours, we're still using it, and I'm sure that it, they'll be in use for many, many more generations. So they're a great investment to have, and I will do a video up close of the machine and my little stitchy spot, or quilting spot, but I thought that would be fun to share. And hopefully soon we'll all be able to go to quilting retreats again and have some fun together. In the meantime, it's so much fun to talk to all of you about my passion. I just love sharing it as a community. We're so blessed to have social media so that we can keep in touch with sewing friends and to make new ones. And I just have really enjoyed sharing my journey along with you. So until next time, Happy quilting. Okay, so here is my quilting setup. I will try to hold the camera steady so I don't make anyone sick. But I thought it'd be fun to show you what I take with me to a quilt retreat. And this is my Singer Featherweight machine. I've named her Matilda after my great grandma Tilly. And I had it painted mint green to match one of Lori's with her permission, of course. And the sewing mat is from the Quilty Fun book that I showed in my last video. And then here are the accessories. I always have extra bobbins, scissors, tweezers, anything that you, you might need in a tin box. And then all of these cute accessories here are from this pattern called Stitchy. And I believe that Lori still sells this pattern in her Etsy shop. But I have made the scissor holder, the drawstring, pat drawstring patchwork bag, and 
than this fun bag that hangs over your chair, armchair so that when you're doing embroidery or binding a quilt or cross stitching it lays over the arm and then you put your needles right here and it holds your scissors I love 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 this I use it all the time and it was super fun to make with her instructions it's very easy and then of course a book stand for your chart I always use a so seems so easy guide on my featherweight because that way you can use a quarter inch foot but you can also see what your middle line is to do like half square triangles and then a quarter inch on the other side I hold it down with washi tape it doesn't take off the paint on your Singer Featherweight, but it holds it firm enough so that this doesn't wiggle on you. And then of course, measuring tape, but it's just so much fun. And I thought that you would enjoy seeing my little stitchy quilting retreat set up. Hopefully we can all get together and sew together in person. Until next time, happy quilting everyone.